why not sit back, relax, and take things easy like a Sunday morn? I'm your host, Shane Lockwood. This is Easy Like a Sunday Morn, and this is episode 90. Today we're going to be talking about putting yourself first. But before we do, before I do, I'd like you to put yourself first and find your favorite sitting spot. Now that might be your favorite armchair, sofa, couch, lounge suite. You might be at a kitchen table, sitting on a kitchen chair, ready to take notes. You may be hopping into bed and unwinding and using the sound of my voice to drift off to sleep. There's no guilt and there's no shame and I'm not embarrassed or worried about that sort of thing at all. I'm not offended. If you aren't driving your car, please keep your eye on the road and uh, maybe listen to this once you've parked and maybe even listening to this after work. So, and before you go into um, the household home and just to de-stress before you take all that animosity and work-related stress into the family home. But what we're going to do is we're talking about putting ourselves first. Oh, before we do that, um, close your eyes and focus on your breathing for a little bit. So you just want to be breathing in through your nostrils. So... And you hold it for a little bit, and then you want to be breathing out through the mouth. In through the nostrils, out through the mouth. And you want to keep doing that. And just relax, and just remind yourself that you are indeed safe. And please be safe when you're listening to this. And I know this is not the best podcast listening, but um, that's what we're going to do. So we're talking about putting ourselves first. Now, a little background history of like why I'm talking about this now is because I had a situation about, say, seven months ago, and it led to a radical change in my thinking processes and the content that I was consuming on YouTube and elsewhere, the podcasts that I was listening to and the people that I was listening to on TikTok and other places. And the general consensus was putting ourselves first. If I, or if we wanted to change or transform our lives, this particular topic is especially interesting or directed towards people who are people pleasers, people who um, either were raised in like a religion or um, households where um, it was felt that they needed to people please or to help other people or to rescue other people. Those of you like myself who have had a, we understand you have empathy for other people. You have a lot of empathy for other people and you want to rescue or save people. You want to be the hero of the story. And, or the idea that putting yourself first is somehow egotistical or narcissistic or somehow bad. And it reminded me of a band in the 70s, 1970s, called the Skyhawks, and they had a song called Ego is not a dirty word. But we are not living in the 70s, another one of their songs. Um, we are living in the present moment. If you do want to look up their music, you can do so on uh, YouTube. There are plenty of their music clips and things like that. No, we're a brilliant band. Um, until the lead singer got killed by... In a helicopter accident accident um but yeah do check out the skyhawks as a fantastic band so what we're going to talk about as a counterpoint to the idea that ego is a dirty word or 
the fact that if you were raised in a religion, you will believe that sacrificing your life now will somehow grant you a benefit in something called the afterlife. Now, I don't believe in the afterlife. I am not condemning uh, those who, of you who do, but you have to stop and think about what it is that you're actually sacrificing and allowing into your life when you do believe in that. When you, If you are punishing yourself now for something that may or may not happen after you're dead, it, it's something you have to weigh up and wrestle with within yourself. But for if you are in a position where you are not happy with your life, you are not happy with your relationships, and you are just not happy in general, putting yourself first can change a lot of stuff. So I've written a list of things that um, I believe can change or improve in our lives when we do those things. So what may happen is you may find yourself treating yourself to the things that you like more often. You're not having to kowtow to a partner's desires and you may find that if you put yourselves first or put yourself and your partner um, first, in what it is that you're doing as a partnership, you may find yourselves being a bit more intimate and having opening the gateway to a, a lot more communication, a lot less frustration, a lot less arguments, and this can extend to your children as well. I'm not married, I don't have children, so take that with a grain of salt. And if it works for you, great, give me all the credit. If it doesn't, uh, you've never heard of me before in your life. But... You want to put yourself first in the sense that if you want to change things, you may find that if you're a people pleaser, there are people that will take advantage of you. You will maybe manipulated like I was seven months ago. Um, I will talk about that, like I said, in a future podcast when I get my head around the whole thing. But in general, your relationships will improve when you are mentally stable, when you have a clear head. So you need to give yourself permission to be able to, if you're having an argument, to be able to stop and go, hang on, we're having an argument, we're having a disagreement, I'm going to put myself first and distance myself from the argument and really analyse what is it that's being argued about, what is it, is it just money? Is it because the bills weren't paid? Is it really the issue? What's the underlying issue behind all this sort of stuff? Because the bills will get paid eventually. So what, what's what's going on? So you can listen to your needs, your internal needs. In Seinfeld, I think it's there's a reference to either the, the little man inside or the little voice. I can't remember exactly. But... This is an idea that's coming up more and more for me, and I will do that, uh, talk about that in a future episode as well. But the idea is that that little voice is your true voice. The louder voices are not necessarily yours. They've come from uh, bits of advice from people in the past, from your parents, from your upbringing, from your um, social circles you know the people you're listening to so what happens is very often we will put other people before us because it's considered a polite thing to do you always give somebody the larger slice of the cake before you or in japan you serve somebody else sake before you serve yourself sake you pour somebody else a drink before you put because it's considered manners right it's be considered selfless because we are conditioned to believe that being self-focused is selfish and narcissistic and something that's evil. Whereas we often, we go the wrong way in that 
we aren't putting ourselves first. We are not kind to ourselves. We are not looking after our health. When you look after, when you start putting your health first, you will need your bodily needs first. You will start looking at your diet and what you are actually eating. And that will improve, not through a restrictive diet, not through um, adhering to diet fads or calorie restriction or anything like that. You've got to look at, okay, so for example, if you are diabetic and you care about yourself, then you're going to be reading food labels and looking at the amount of carbohydrates within the product itself and go, okay, well, maybe I can only eat a portion of this. Maybe I should only eat a handful of lollies or maybe maybe avoid them altogether, but not with a strict um, diet restriction. Oh, I can't eat this. I can't eat this ever again. No. What you want to do is you want to minimize things, the things that aren't the best for you and maximize the things that are good for you because you deserve to feed your body right. Now, it's not a top-down guilt-based thing of you must do this, you mustn't do that. It's, hang on, I think I deserve better. So I'm going to maybe treat myself to a, a restaurant meal. Right now, I don't know what your budget may be, and but once a month, go out with a family and treat yourself to a counter meal at a pub or something like that or um, some of the more expensive restaurants or something like that because you deserve that. When you put yourself first, you find that you're not wasting money on things that are frivolous. You're not wasting it on people that have no interest in returning that money, returning the favours. You, you won't waste your time on people that have no interest in themselves, like no interest in improving themselves. You won't waste time. You won't waste energy on people that aren't looking to improve themselves. And you do have to protect your resources because with the current economy the way it is, the um, the access to resources is somewhat finite. You've got you know, high, really high inflation at the time that I'm recording this. But you have better relationships too. Um, you will have, if you put yourself first, you are listening to your own needs. Okay. If you can communicate those needs to your partner and you both can do it, you build an intimacy. There's less coercion to do certain things that you don't want to do. If you are listening to the inner self of what it is that you want to do and getting, you get more of what you actually want and less of what you don't want. When you put yourself first, you can say no when people offer you things that you don't actually want or need. Now, they may be upset, but you are not in control of them being upset. They are allowed to be upset, but you're putting yourself first, and that's okay. That's okay. You will save heaps of money. You will have more self-respect. You may have the confidence to ask for a pay rise or go for a job that you know you're capable of doing, but you're holding yourself back because you were tied to the job that you've got. If you start listening to that inner voice, right, that inner voice, the little voice, the quiet voice, the voice that is, is actually you, there's no devaluation. When you become aware of people devaluing you and talking down to you, that stops. You put yourself first, you put your boundaries up, you say, hey, you're devaluing me, I don't appreciate that, and what happens is also you will stop devaluing yourself, and that's massive. That's where the change happens. When you stop devaluing yourself, when you know that you could be doing better and better and better,
Or the other thing is um, personal fitness, right? So I get notifications of one of my listeners, Adam Kochi, Koshi. I'm going to mispronounce it, and I'm sorry. I think it's, yeah, Adam Kochi. I'm just going to say that. And he does his little run keeper thing uh, every day. So he's doing something for himself, but his family and everybody around him benefits him going for a walk or a run, doing a little a bit of a lap every day. So there's little things like that. If you are making sure that you have a proper income, now right now I don't have a proper income. There's a long story behind that, and I'll go into that at some other time when I'm doing the personal stuff. But I don't have a proper income. And while I'm okay financially for the time being, it's disconcerting. It's um, it's I've lost my sense of direction. So I'm going to put myself first. I'm going to improve my and update my resume because I haven't touched it in a year. And then I'm going to start applying for jobs that I feel that I am capable of, that I'm capable of, that I can do and that I am capable of achieving and um, putting my best foot forward. Now, the reason I'm saying all of this is because there are people that will devalue you. There are people that want to destroy you. There are people that will slowly eat away at your self-esteem, your morale, and it needs to be protected. There are people that will try to destroy your career. There'll be smear campaigns. There's all sorts of nastiness and things like that, that I'll have to talk about in a future podcast episode, um, because I want to try and keep this positive, light and positive, but there are there is a darker side to humanity. And when you put yourself first, you will protect yourself for that because you value yourself. Um, you respect your body, like I've said, like physical fitness. I've started lifting weights again. I've started modifying my diet. I've started growing um, tomato plants and other vegetables and things like that as an experiment. Um, just to do something that I've never done before, but to build my self-esteem and to improve my life. Um, you, when you put yourself first, you put there are better habits. You aren't. There's no lack. You know, you don't lack toilet paper because you put your needs first, right? You've made sure that there's adequate stuff in your cupboards because you put your needs first. Uh, you respect your time, you respect other people's time, you're aware of things, you're mindful of things, you do set boundaries, Um, meeting your needs, and what else? So yeah, you treat yourself better, you can go and see the movie that you wanted to see, because you're putting yourself first, but it's not a selfish thing, you put your needs First. Now, obviously, you have to find a balance. If you are in a family relationship or like in a marriage situation or have a, uh, a partner or you have children, then they their needs have to come as well. But those needs can be as simple as setting aside five or ten minutes every day just to have a chat and unpack the all the nonsense that we have to go through every day. How are you feeling? Are you feeling okay? How are things with you? How is school? How is work? And now the thing is, some people have been conditioned not to talk about their work day or for whatever reason. Um, putting yourself first gives you the voice to be able to express yourself. Now, for example, with this podcast, I've let other people control my voice. I'm not going to let them do that anymore. Now, it's not the people that are actually listen to the podcast. It's everybody else around me saying, oh, you're not good enough. You have to create the podcast within these certain rules. And, and everybody else does these podcasts a certain way. They have structures. They have this and they have intros. They have this and that, right? 
But this is my podcast. I'm putting this podcast first, right? I don't have to take on the the standards of other people, right? Because when I'm trying, if there's no point me trying to compete with Radio Lab. Radio Lab is a podcast where they spend a year on each episode, all the research, all the overproduction, and it is overproduced, right? So there's a lot of production and that sort of stuff, right? Because they put themselves first, but I'm not them. I don't have their resources. So this is just me <laughs> recording this in my kitchen because I needed to put myself first. I need to hit the red record button and put this out there. Now, there's part of my brain still going, oh, it's not good enough. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be fantastic. It's got to be this and it's got to be that. But it doesn't have to be. It's just me putting myself first. And I hope that um, you will put yourself first. You'll get what you want out of life. But also, when you put yourself first, you can... Uh, you can put yourself in a greater position to help more people, right? So, for example, in order to get a job in Adelaide, for example, and it's really difficult, there's not a whole lot of work around, but there is work if you are willing to travel. Now, Adelaide has a massive amount of what they call urban sprawl. So the suburbs are really, really far apart. And there's also a culture of not hiring people unless they have a driver's license, right? So if you don't have a driver's license, what do you do? In order to be as productive as you possibly could and eliminate a barrier to employment, now this is not an attack on people who don't have driver's licenses, who can't drive, who have disabilities and all that sort of stuff, right? Please don't come at me. But... The obviously obvious solution to that problem is to go for the driver's license, right? So that's something to consider. Or you, look, even if you catch an Uber to wherever it is that you need to go, the, my point is that when you start putting yourself first, you think, okay, you don't listen to bad advice. You start going, okay, is this beneficial for me? And you can do this at any second of the day, during the day, whenever, is this beneficial to me, right? If you're tired, give yourself permission to go to sleep. If you are hungry, give yourself permission to get something to eat. If you are genuinely hungry, rather than um, I'm agitated and I'm thinking about stuff. When you put yourself first and really listen, not to the to the louder voices, the quiet voices, your life starts to change. People, and the funny thing is, people will start to distance themselves from you because you start to grow, right? And this is strange because there are people that you have been confiding in and trusting, and as you grow, all of a sudden they start to give you the grey rock, which is where they are. They don't give you a lot of time. And when they interact you with you, it's one word sentences and things like that. Eventually, they may even block you or um, go no contact with you because they don't resonate with you anymore because they were feeding off you. And I've said this before if you become salty, all the leeches will drop off. You change, in Star Trek terms, if you change the polarity of your shield, right? I'm thinking of the um, TV show Enterprise. It's probably, it's not my favorite Star Trek series, but they had a very early form of shielding where they would reverse the polarity of the, the plates that surrounded the ship, and it would just repel things. Very basic um, technology uh, in, in, in Star Trek terms, but that's the point. You will start to repel the people that got a kick out of devaluing you. 
Well, who do you think you are? Those sorts of people. That is a narcissistic statement. Who do you think you are? And you know what's funny? I did a comedy, stand-up comedy course back in 2019. And I was taught by Glyn Nicholas. And he was a very famous comedian. He did the big gig on the ABC. And he did, like, Here's Humphrey and a few other shows and things like that. So he was fairly popular. And he told me that if anybody comes up to you, or if you hear a voice in the back of your head that says, who are you? In the sense of, who do you think you are to be on stage? Who are you? You're a nobody. If you hear that voice, you need to tell them where to go, how to get there, and how quickly to get away from you. Because those sorts of voices are not you. They don't serve you. They are not beneficial. So, and I've talked about this before, where if you put yourself first, you will do things that you never thought you could ever do before because you're worthy of growing. You're worthy of standing on stage in front of a crowd of people. You might be scared of doing something like that. I certainly was. I had I was riddled with self-doubt. But now that I've done it a few times, it'll get easier and easier and easier to make people laugh. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to put myself first and make people laugh. That's my sole goal in life. Now, I do have higher aspirations than that, but that becomes a driving force. If you want to live the life you want, make it a reality. Put yourself first. Get out of the fiction. Lose the fictional construct. Be the people that you idolize. Become them. You're allowed to become... If you're a woman listening to this, you're allowed to become Wonder Woman. You're allowed to become Batman. If you're a guy listening to this, you're allowed to become Doctor Who. You're allowed to become the people that you idolize. Become Luke Skywalker. Become Bruce Lee. But not though you don't become those constructs. You become your version of those things. You become an idealized version of yourself so that an idealized version of yourself is not used against you in a love bomb that's basically what love bombing is love bombing is where a narcissist will use a mirror against you and they will reflect all your best qualities they give you self-love and then you become addicted to that self-love and then they start devaluing you and you crave the self-love from an external source and then you get trapped into that relationship and then they discard you at your lowest point in an attempt to punish you. That's what basically what happened to me, say, seven months ago, and I will go into that at a D in another podcast episode. I did really didn't want to bring it up here because I wanted to keep this relatively positive um but yeah treat yourself right you know maybe less junk food once again not um not demonizing any particular food groups or anything like that but eating more healthy food going for a walk every day maybe once a week depends on you know your lifestyle and things like that slowly incorporating things like putting yourself first and not having to worry about what other people think. What is it that you think? What do you think of yourself? Are you down on yourself? Are you devaluing yourself? Are you working in a place where you're being bullied and being treated horribly? Is that something that needs to change? Are you better at something else? Is there something that you have a hobby that you could probably turn into a side hustle? Put yourself first for a change. You can change your life. I can change my life. And it's scary. I'm scary. I'm not scary. I'm scared of the future. I don't know what the future holds. I really, really don't. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there. I've been going on for a, a while and I ran out of notes. This was only supposed to be a very short video, but a short podcast. But yeah, in, in summary, basically listen to your inner voice, ignore the louder voices that come from other people, come from society, come from the so your social circle, your upbringing, your parents and things like that. Put yourself first without guilt, without shame. Treat yourself right. Do the best things for you. Exercise your body. Eat proper food. Um, limit you know, your screen time. Limit your exposure to social media. Limit your exposure to the news. I know that's counterproductive for some people. You don't want to be ignorant of what's going on in the world, but be aware that there's a lot of stuff that you can't change. And I think... You have to be okay with that. You have to embrace something called radical acceptance of the things that you just can't change. But be aware of the things that you can change. And it's time for you to shine. For me personally, I had a, a mental image of an eagle spreading its wings. And I realized that you can't soar like an eagle if you've still got ground underneath you i had people strip the ground underneath me so i don't have a foundation now it's time for me to spread my wings and soar like an eagle that's all for me today look after yourselves and may the rest of today and the rest of the week be easy like a sunday morn and for those of you who listen for the code word the secret code word is the word clearance, C-L-E-A-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Catch up with you next time. Bye for now.